One more time for the greatest team in America. Uh, it was pretty amazing when you just you can only look back and realize how amazing it was because we was in it. Everything was super slow, right? I just look at us play. Everything was we wasn't in, never in a rush. You watch us clock ticking down. You never saw us in a real rush when you watch some of the old tapes. You don't see us panicking. Everything came was really slow. Everything the game was really slow for me. By the time I hit my junior year, the game had slowed down so much for me that I just could not. It was almost like okay. This is where we're going. I can almost tell you what Paul was going to call. Because of what they was doing to us, you can almost anticipate his next call. Most of the time, Coach Russell didn't even wear a headset. Uh, one, Roger Inman, who was the equipment manager, would have the headset. And sometimes he'd relay the plays to Coach Russell. And and it was funny, a couple times, Roger would go, what's the play, what's the play? And I'd just mess with him. I'd make something up. And R Roger would go, He'd tell Coach Russell that, and he'd tell Roger, he'd tell them guys to knock that off. You know, he he kind of let us do what we needed to do on offense. He didn't get too involved. In 85, we'd lost to Middle Tennessee State at home. They were the number one ranked team, and we ended up playing them in the playoffs. They were really, really, really good. They, like I said, they beat us 35 to 10 in the regular season. Um, they had some some pro players on that team, and I mean, we, we had to be perfect. Uh, the Middle Tennessee game was the only game that I, you know, that really bought, that really had me up at night. Because I, I had to find a way to beat them, and then what I realized, I was saying, I got to find a way to beat them, and it really wasn't me who was going to beat them. Yeah, they played a 4-4 defense, and I, we saw very few of those. Jared, the fullback always beats a 4-4, and I just couldn't fathom how a fullback would beat, and sure enough, Paul kept beating. The fullback's gonna beat him, not you. The fullback's gonna beat him. And in the end, Gerald Harris was the key. Uh, Gerald made some just spectacular runs, but I tell you what, Nate Young made two spectacular uh, interceptions. Their offense was pretty dynamic at the time, and we felt like our defense played a heck of a game, only giving up 21 to them, but we kept the ball quite a bit that game. You know, we picked our spots to throw, and, and, and Paul just, called a, a great game and uh, it was it was a heckling upset I mean we, we didn't belong on the same field with them but our guys believed we played good defense that day and it, that was one of the greatest wins in Georgia Southern history I think uh, to go in and beat an undefeated number one ranked team uh, in their house it was uh, it was pretty dang special and then once we beat Middle Tennessee we realized we could beat anybody Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the beautiful Uni Dome in Cedar Falls, Iowa, for the NCAA Division I AA playoffs between Georgia Southern and the University of Northern Iowa, the winner of this one. Going on next week to Tacoma, Washington, to take on Furman University. When we went into playoffs, there were some dynamics going there as far as our kids were concerned. Number one, they'd never been on an airplane. And we had a lot of kids who just were scared to death. And that's where the Eagle Creek water idea came from. We are the only football team in America that has its own creek. I decided to call it Beautiful Eagle Creek and and the reason that I decided to do that's pretty obvious. Uh, there's some, some of the most uh, beautiful pizza boxes, uh, beer cans, uh, old softballs and golf <laughs> balls that you've ever seen on the bottom. We've taken this water uh, thousands of miles Statesboro. We baptize those fields to make us feel at home since it's always worked. I have no reason to doubt that it beautiful Eagle Creek does possess those mystic and magical powers. We left Statesboro probably a, a good smooth 85, 87 degrees got to there. It was 17 above zero. Good news it was indoors, otherwise it'd be one of the coldest days of my life. That's one of the noisiest serenities you'll ever play in. You can't hear yourself think, much less, you know, you had to definitely go outside to change your mind it was so dang bad. In order to prepare for that game, Irk had uh, me find all the amps I could find to put along the sideline at practice to make all the noise we could make. Uniquely Radio Shack gave me all the amps they had, all the speakers I had, and in that time Nate Hurst gave me 
some uh, crowd noise. And all we did for practice for that week is just crowd noise. And on Thursday, we finally went indoors and hand her to get it as loud as we could get it. So uh, Tracy would have to think about not being able to hear themselves talk with you know, sign languages. Do something to communicate from player to player because you could not hear out there. The Northern Iowa game was a, was a very unique game. They had not seen the option offense. Uh, as a matter of fact, I remember um, reading in their paper that they had barred a high school quarterback to portray Tracy Ham in practice. And you know that's kind of hard to do. Well, the Northern Iowa game, one of the funniest things, we're in the, you know, in the Uni Dome and uh, running on the field, we got caught in the revolving doors and we were out warming up and uh, their fans started counting. We dropped like 12 passes in a row of warmups, you know, just streaks, lobs, takeoffs, whatever. And then the kids started dropping them on purpose because their fans were counting them and, and they were going nuts. You know, I think we got up to 10 or 12 that we dropped. And uh, really, really loud. And then I think, you know, in the first series, I think we threw about a 70 or 80 yard touchdown pass. <laughs> I think the first touchdown pass was to Monty Sharp and, and it was a long one. And, you know, Monty made a lot of great plays for us. He was a really good player at Georgia Southern. Both teams up and down the field, you know, uh, two different styles of offense. Just if you like offense, that was a game to see. I mean, it was just a track I mean, It was just an offensive showcase by both teams. Northern Iowa was just one of those cases where they just just didn't believe that a team from South could beat them. They had been there before. First time they probably saw they probably saw us on the in the, in the rankings. You know, because everybody watched the rankings, right? That was the only way we could keep up with stuff. You watched the rankings, and so. Uh, they were uh, pretty dynamic offensively. All those teams were pretty dynamic offensively, but we, we had a way of beating you that, you know, what you took away, we can, we can go to something else. And we were really good at adjusting. I think we threw the ball six times that game. Completed two. He's going long, down the right side. And it's intercepted! It's intercepted by May Young! Take your time, May. He goes down at the 44 yard line. 17 seconds to go. The Georgia Southern sideline beside themselves. Four. Three, two, one, it's on to Tacoma. We're going to the National Championship game.